start the recording this time. So um, with this, uh, with this uh, portion of the Excel sheet, basically what I've just discussed or shown you um, is what you enter. So this portion is where you write your why. And then here is where you give a personal story, basically just a summary of um, why you are going on a financial journey and whatnot. And in this box here, I've just uh, highlighted um, a note just to say what you should be focusing on as you are entering your details in here. And then remember those uh, three goals I was talking about. So these are the exact same goals that you would enter. Um, open up an investment account. Then your action steps is go to the brokerage website, download the forms, and so on and so forth. Uh, goal number two, buy a piggy bank to keep coins and five quacha notes. And you say, no, I'm going to go check out a Chinese store or I'll DIY it, use an existing box at home, make a hole and then create it. So now with these financial goals here, these ones, I want them, or at least not that I want them. The way I think about them would be um, habits that you want to um, achieve so that as you go year by year, month by month, you get better at managing your money. So there's a tab uh, that I've created just to give you some examples of what you can add as short-term goals, mid-term goals, or long-term goals. So I won't go through all of these because these are way too many, uh, but it's something as simple as looking at number one, which is establishing a budget. Be health focused. Even that is a financial goal in itself because you are going to be doing all these nice things, managing your money, saving and investing, and you are not healthy. Hi, guys, you need to be there to reap <laughs> the fruits of your labor. So even being health focused can be a financial goal. Learn a new skill, save on utilities, design a money system, which is what you are here learning how to do. Watch three YouTube finance videos per week. It's as simple as that. You don't have to always attach a financial goal with saying this amount of money should be saved, should be invested. Donating your money, another awesome financial goal, which is one that I am working on this year as well. Listen to 10 financial podcasts, read financial books, uh, be able to live off one income, especially uh, if you are a two income household. And always pick my suggestion is live off the one with the lower income. Create a living will. Track your expenses monthly. Have no 30 spend days. Create sinking funds. There are so many short-term goals that you could create. But then what we are going to focus on are the ones that involve money. So once you've entered your why, the next step where the fun begins is your financial goals. So now here, what you're looking at are my financial and investment and investing goals. And in the first column, the one that's been highlighted in green, this is, um, what, I would, this is what I would consider as um, a completed, like if everything were done, this is how much I should have saved and invested or something. So you, again, priorities. So you, Prioritize your financial goals. There are so many things you would want to save for and spend money on, but always put priority. Your priority will be detected by your why. So for me, I have the following uh, financial and saving goals, and these are arbitrary amounts I've just added. Some of them are the real ones, some of them are not. So let's say for the first one, which is my rainy day fund, I always want to have 7,800 per year to say to spend not to save this money is meant to be spent by the way to be spent on what i refer to as rainy day uh, expenses now you might ask number three is emergency fund and you also have a rainy day fund and if you look again you have 12 months living expenses as well so those things to some people are one and the same thing eh 
Now, this is where it now gets personal. So for me, um, what I use my rainy day fund are things for, let's say celebrating my friend's wedding, someone just gets engaged. This is a close friend of mine and I want to help them celebrate or be part of their committee. This is where this money is going to come from. I'm, invi I'm invited to go for a date somewhere and I want to look cute, eh? So I'm going to buy myself a nice sexy dress and this is where this money is going to come from because I personally do not have a clothing sinking fund. So for most people, you probably have a clothing sinking fund, but for me, this is where this money comes from. So basically what my rainy day fund does is anything that's unexpected that comes, which I want to spend money on. Family member needs help. I will send the money from here. Uh, Chipepo has done such a great job in actually naming this the love fund. So you can copy from her. So how she calls has the love fund. Me, mine is called rainy day. And then after that, my second uh, goal in order of importance eh, is local vacations. So because uh, if you recall, my why had to travel in it and I value going to places a lot, but there are two types of traveling that I've highlighted in my life. It's probably too much overkill in terms of separation. I've said local vacations would be anything within Zambia. And then I have vacation, vacation, vacation in my head. Vacation, vacation with two Vs is anything that requires an airplane to go to Greece, Japan, or uh, let's say Netherlands. So these are my big destination countries in terms of traveling. This is where I want to go. So anything that requires a plane is called vacation slash honeymoon, which is this one. So once you've identified or given your uh, goes a description. Yes, vacation squared. So basically, yes. So once you've given a description to your goals and you've also ranked them, so all of these are ranked, although here the ranking is a bit off. So actually what should happen is number four is 12 month savings and then five is brokerage. But remember to rank them. Eh? You are going to assign a goal amount of how much you think of you you will need for that specific activity. So there are so many ways in which you can tackle this. The, one, the ones that I'll talk about quickly are, let's say my emergency fund. So my emergency fund go amount is actually 30,000. Now, this amount, where did I get it from? Really, if I'm being honest, this is the amount that allows me to sleep soundly. This, if I know that I have 30,000 in my account for an emergency, I can sleep soundly. This is your deciding factor. So for me, emergencies are, let's say my laptop breaks down completely, it gets bent. And I am a software developer and a lecturer. Eh? So I need to be able to be able to, uh, to replace my laptop within a short period of time. And I think uh, replacing a good laptop would cost about 30. Although even if you see now here, my my budget is 40,000, but I think I could compromise my specs to buy one for 30,000. And right now, in this next column, you state how much you've already saved and then the amount that is left. So if I change this back to 20, these values should also change, which is why I'm saying, guys, if you are scared of Excel, these things are just plug and play. You are just going to be playing around with numbers and the values would be changing. So that's how you establish your emergency fund. Now, for most people, uh, especially if they are on the lower side of income and they are using the Dave Ramsey baby steps, his recommendation is 1,000 US dollars for a starter emergency fund, keyword starter. He doesn't say stop there. Once you've done your 1,000 emergency fund, he really wants you to focus on, on the next steps but the point is you should eventually get that emergency fund to something that you are uh, comfortable with. And I've said slash opportunity fund for me because life is very dynamic. In as much as we have emergencies or bad things that happen, there are wonderful things that will also happen. And I can give a quick example. When I was at school doing my master's, there was an opportunity to go to Italy for a summer school for about a month. However, my visa was expiring. So I needed my visa to be processed to travel to Italy 
within Zambia. So that meant I needed money for a flight ticket to come to Zambia, process my visa issues, and then fly back to school. Now, because I didn't have money, there was that opportunity missed because the school I was at was going to fund everything else, my lodging, my flight, all of that was going to be uh, already done for me if I just sorted out my visa issues now because I, I didn't have the money. So I just said, hey, we shall stay. And that's how I lost out on going to Italy. So other for me, this is now where things get personal. I feel like the first two or rather emergency fund and 12 months living expenses, these are the entire, okay, not the entire financial community, the financial community at large agrees on these two. Then everything else that you see are pretty much my own. So like a laptop, building, vacation and honeymoon, car, brokerage and land. All these are my own uh, financial savings and investments. These are the go amounts. And this is what I have saved. This is what is left to reach that goal. And this is the time horizon I have given myself to reach that savings goal. So any questions on the green part? So now this is where I'll probably pause and then we shall go ahead. So now the Excel template, no, this one, this one I'm selling guys. We'll discuss the price at the end. So now this is what I referred to as the completed uh, section. Now, we now drilling down to the next six months. Eh? So we are saying in an ideal situation without thinking of income, how much do you think you can save for this? So since I've already completed one, two, and three for this year, now I want to save for goal number four. So we'll say description, 12 months, living expenses, living expenses. So what do I want to save this year only, which is the yearly amount. So this year I want to save uh, 48,000 kwacha. And if I subtract uh, 48 minus 36, I have about 12,000 left. So I'm going to do the subtraction already. Okay, no, I think it will do the thinny thinny yearly amount, 48,000 already saved. I have 36. The amount left is 12,000. And if I'm going to start counting from July to December, which is six months here, it's telling me that I need to save 2,000 kwacha every single month to reach that goal. And then let's say the next one I'm working on probably is let's say a brokerage. So now I've just gotten excited about investing. So this is where you are seeing this one. So my brokerage accounts, I want to save 50,000 and I've already invested 5,000. So I need, uh, what's left is 45,000 kwacha. In the span of six months, I will need to contribute 7,500 to my brokerage account. Let's do honeymoon and vacation as well. Honeymoon and vacation. Again, my deadline is December, 2021. What do I want to save this year? 20,000 only, even though I have given myself 150 as the target. So I'm doing it in pieces. So this is part of my midterm uh, goals. So I haven't saved anything this year. So, if I give my months, let's say I want to do it by January, which is seven months, it will tell me I need to do 2,857. And you're going to do that for the remaining ones. Eh? So now this portion in this uh, peachy pink section, this is if I had all the income available, but now let's ring this in and then uh, get a bit of real, with our spending here. So the reason why I advocate so strongly for tracking your expenses be is because you can make better informed decisions, of course, but you, you know exactly how much you spend on your bills, your variable spending, and how much you spend on sinking funds. Eh? So if we look at, so maybe let me add another goal. Uh, let's do laptop because that one 
I need a new laptop. So I'll add laptop. Yearly amount, I want a very expensive laptop. So I want for 40,000, we have nothing spent. And let's say I'm trying to hit Black Friday sale. So that's November. So that's July, August, September, October, November, five months to save for that thing. So I need to save 8,000 kwacha. So this portion here tells me I need 117,000 kwacha just to ensure that I hit these savings goals. But now what I'm saying here under this blue section is now let's make these savings and investments smart, which is um, specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and time bound is. But mostly, most importantly, we are adding the R because we've already done the specific, uh, specific portion through describing what they are. We have given them a measure, which is our time horizon when we want to achieve those goals. We are now looking at attainable and realistic in this section. So I need 117,000 to hit these four goals. This is after I have eaten, I have paid my rent, my, there's electricity, we've, we've done everything that we need to do as a family. On top of that, I still need this amount of money. <clears throat> so I've created a quick demo calculation thing that will tell you that actually no, even though you want to save 117,000, that ain't possible with the income that you have. So let's, uh, let's quickly fill in these details again. So I'm going to add these same descriptions here and give the same yearly amounts. And then what has already been saved, and then it will calculate what's left and the months. So here I put seven and then five. So I'll follow those same examples. So we have six, six, seven, five, six, six, seven, and then five. So now what I'll do is look at my monthly income. So for monthly income, I know safely. And when you are doing your calculations and estimations, always go for the lowest amount that you get, not the highest amount. So I've put 20,000 because that's approximately what I earn monthly. And then the number of months that are left in which I want to achieve these goals is six months. So I'm looking at uh, July to December. And then I've also given an estimation on what my total bills per month are. So this is internet, water, the ground rates are paid, rent, uh, and even leaving some money for small, small things, and even talk time bundles. Other utilities, all of those things are included in my bills. So I've said two, five. And then what about variable spending? So because I follow the budget mom, she has cash envelopes, which I use for my variable spending. I know on average, 3,000 is enough in the mid range. If I really want to be restrictive with my budget, I can give it a two, eight. If I want to give it a, like a life where I'm comfortable, comfortable, where I can even eat out every weekend, I'll probably raise that to 4,000. And then sinking funds as well. Remember, you always want to incorporate sinking funds because this is money you know you're going to spend eventually. When I calculated my sinking funds, my monthly average is 2,500. Uh, so it also tells me after I have removed all of these costs at a six months level, it tells me I only have 72,000 kwacha that I can actually save and invest. So looking at where I am, it tells me that I am short about 45,000 kwacha. So now this is where I now start adding some realism into it now to make it more realistic so that I can hit this because I know if I left my goals at this, I would be nowhere near achieving those things. So now I have to make some edits to see if I can match this. There might be other external information that you have. For instance, if you are only considering monthly income, maybe you've got a side hustle and you know it is uh, reliable, you can probably add that. I personally don't have, so I'll leave it at this. So this is where now I start to reduce my amounts. So I know for this one, I really want to save. And then maybe 
for my vacation and honeymoon. Instead of saying 20,000, I'll see what happens if I reduce that to 10 and then this other one to 15,000. Will I be able to do so? So I'm still 10,000 short. So I need to knock out 10,000. So I'll say, okay, fine. I'm going to remove from my brokerage and they say, okay, this is where I break even. At this point, this is a good estimate to say these financial goals I will most likely hit after I factored in my bills, my variable spending and my sinking funds. Now for me, what I did was I saved up for all my sinking funds prior. So I know I don't have any sinking funds cost. So I can remove that. And it tells me the, because I have done my sinking funds already, I have 15,000 freed up. So I can now decide where do I want to put this 15,000. So I can put a 5,000 to my laptop, make it 20, and then add a 20 again back on my vacation and still maintain my brokerage at 40. So this would be an idea of me balancing out what I can save and invest. Now, once you have decided what you are going to save and invest, we move on to this section. Now, the bank accounts. Which bank account are you going to use to store this money? So for my preference, I think I even put a note. Yes. Okay, no, this was for something else. So let's look at, let's say something like your emergency fund. For me, my emergency fund, I need access to it when I want it. And when I say when I want it, I also look at it from, if I were to go back in time, like three days prior, will I still have access to that money if I look at it from which bank accounts and which uh, preference or features should it have? If the answer is yes, that is a good indication. So for me, I wouldn't put my emergency fund, let's say in standard chartered because we don't have standard chartered here in Curve. So it doesn't make sense for me personally to put money in a bank, which I know I need to travel to, to get the money via an ATM. Of course, we can use Visa cards, of course, but me, I'm very cheap, with, especially with withdraw. I can probably use a Visa card and still get the money. But let's say I'm in Itej Tej. I don't know if they even have standard chartered there or even stand big for that matter, or FNB in Itej Tej. So when I pick my emergency fund, I look at ease of access. And if I were to go back a week before or a few days before, do I still have access to it? And the reason why I say if I go back a week before is that there are certain bank accounts that are like seven day notice, 32 day notice, those notice accounts where you have to inform the bank prior to access the amount. So that's where my thought process comes in for that. So when you are looking at your savings goals, you have to decide which bank you are going to put it into. And if you look at the way my financial system is set up, I probably have roughly eight or seven bank accounts. Now, for me, probably that's overkill for other people, but for me, I like seeing the amount being separated. And for some of them, actually, they are combined. So I will tell you immediately, let's say like my bank account one, I know that my vacation, is it vacation squared is in one account. And then in the same account, I also have my building because of the kind of access this bank account has and also the time frame when I'm going to access this money. So for me, building will probably only happen when I have finished uh, paying off for the land. So I don't need immediate access to it and vacation probably when the world opens. So these two are combined. So you decide eventually, you can do a combination. Other people just have two separate accounts. They have the main account, which they use for transactions, which is referred to as a checking account. And then one savings goal where they put everything, whether it's 12 months living expenses, the vacation, honeymoon, date night, car fund, laptop, whatever in one single account, but they have 
a, a paper somewhere where they can track how much money is allocated for which goal. So depending on how your brain operates and how you can differentiate, you can choose which approach you take. So someone has asked, I think while we're still on the topic, um, do you, okay, someone has said you can have one bank and that's okay, just add restrictions for each account. And I agree, whatever works for you. So do I factor in bank charges for all seven? Yes, I am a very petty person, even if I save quite a bit. I don't like being charged for things. So for me, bank accounts that have monthly maintenance, I know no, there is no need for you to maintain money that I'm just going to be putting and will only be withdrawing uh, once, maybe one year or once in two years. So monthly maintenance, if the, ma if the account has a monthly maintenance, I say no or ask if they can remove it because maybe there are other features I want. If they still can't uh, give me the account minus the maintenance fee, I move on to something else. So when I look for savings account, I look for accounts that have maybe what they refer to as an opening balance. Usually these are 100 kwacha or 200, but then I look at the longevity. Am I able to get this 200 kwacha back from the interest I'll be getting from saving? If the answer is yes, they now get. Oh, yes. Another one that has come in from the charts. Mobile money accounts are equally a good idea for certain goals. So for me, if I were to go the money, mobile money accounts, they'll strictly be saving, uh, sinking funds, not actual savings goals. Because I know for most mobile money accounts, you can only go as high as, um, is it 10,000 or 20,000 per mobile network? Now, for me, the issue with mobile money network accounts is the transaction fees. I sh mm, those ones, those eight quarters, 10 quarters, 15 quarters, 20 quarters to send 800 quarters don't sit well with me because in my financial system, I only spend 11 quarters to withdraw money once a month. So those ones you have to, as long as it makes life easy for you, please, Whatever makes life easy for you, please go with that approach. For me, I never have money in mobile money accounts. So even when someone says, can you send the mobile money? I'm like, I just do an e-wallet or something. So this is savings. Now, recall here I put um, sinking funds. Eh? I put the amount, which was 2.5. Now, sinking funds deserve their own Excel sheet version. So first of all, let me see if I can show you my sinking funds for last year. And this just goes to show how excited I was going back when I first started ne? and how small this list has gone to, only eight. So by Victoria, 2020, she created her sinking funds. Well, now if you look at this list, we have 38 items, eh? And remember, sinking funds are basically things you know you're going to spend money on, but you want to save small amounts uh, every single month until that target debt for it. So here we can see I have 38 things. Ah, no, Victoria likes things. Guys, I like spending money. And from these things, I can tell you only the things in green are the things that I managed to get. So this taught me something. And this is where prioritization came in for me to say, in as much as you would want to buy the world as it were, you still have to rank those things that you deem important to you. You would want to purchase all these things. So this was last year. This is my 2020 financial plan Excel sheet. Now I humbled myself and really thought things through. And even when you first start, you can go as crazy as I am so that you can do some soul searching and then find. But now these are the ones that I spend my money on in terms of sinking funds. These I know are my diehard sinking funds. Now my sinking funds are different in the sense that they are those things that are, I buy locally or will spend local amounts, but then there are those things that I also buy online. So for those things that I buy online, I had to create these two columns, the US amount, shipping within the US, transaction fee, and the shipping, just to get those things in. And I also have an exchange rate, um, which we can change from month to month, and then 
the amounts can also change. So if I change that, these that have US amounts attached will also change. And again, even with sinking funds, you're going to list them according to importance. So for me, birthdays, very important. I'm a birthday person, especially for myself. And when I say birthdays, actually this should read my birthday, not for other people. Other people, I cash flow, meaning whatever month they are coming in, I'll just remove money from my paycheck. But for my birthday, this is where I go all out. And for someone who doesn't really, is not really a socialite or someone who goes out, but for my birthday, whatever it may be, I'm saving money. I'm also big on uh, skincare and all these other things that you're seeing. So the point is, again, you're going to list out your descriptions, put the US amount if there's shipping associated, transaction fees, always add those. So this is money that we don't notice, but comes out. And this is where I got my two five from. So actually by the time I was creating this sinking fund, I think the exchange rate was at 22. So this gave me my two five, two six approximation. So this is where this came out in terms of how much money per month am I going to be setting aside for all my sinking funds. It was about two six or somewhere there. So when you're creating your sinking funds, another rule of thumb is especially if you've got uh, anything that you're buying online, always budget up. So the exchange rate right now should be around 23, I think. So for me, I would probably put 27 to be on the safe side. In fact, the way things are going, maybe even 28. So these amounts will even change accordingly. So the ones that don't change are just simply quacha based. So the reason why I say 27 or 28 is because this is a sinking fund and it's going to be purchased later on. So you just want enough leeway in case there's an increase in the exchange rate. So basically that, and we have six minutes. And then again, we have all of these sinking fund ideas, things that you can create sinking funds for. Pets, dentists, kitchen parties, weddings, house maintenance, cars, debt nights, furniture, vacation, break, uh, braces, graduation or prom, taxes, if you pay taxes, the laptop replacement, annual memberships, anything, new baby. I, rem I remember seeing in one of the, the TBM Facebook group where someone said a mistake or oops, baby as a sinking fund. And you can really personalize these things according to the way you want them. Um, so I think, yes, this is where I will end as far as uh, today's section. But just uh, remember that we've just done step number one and a third of step number two, because after you've set your short term goals, you need to go down and then look at your midterm goals and your long term goals. So I think I'll stop here for now. And then we can quickly have a Q and A. And if you guys want, we can renew it for the last session, but I really didn't want to do too many sessions. Um, so yeah, basically that's how you typically go about creating your financial plan, especially when it comes to your savings and investment goals. Um, I don't know if we manage to answer like questions the ones we got from Instagram. Okay. Um, and, uh, the ones from here, yeah. So I don't know if people In are willing. We four minutes, yeah. And let us know if we can recreate the, um, the session and then come back. If you can just come or we could end. Or we can end here. Anyone who wants to volunteer in the chat to say we come back for one last session just for Q&A at this point? Okay. I'm not Silence sure. means no. <laughs> so let's quickly go through the, the we question. We can come back and then ah, for okay, those people who don't want to come back, they can, you know. Yeah, I've seen uh, in the... And anyway, I haven't talked much myself, but you can see this is a Victoria Needs session. But so I'll just like give a, <laughs> I'll give a recap on just like um, 
the like she mentioned budget mom i personally have mentioned dev rams in a lot of my posts so i'll just like to maybe say a few words on that and then the pattern savings and investments and then thinking fund uh, ideas something to do with that and then we also do the questions i think that shouldn't take um, more than 30 minutes so yeah like she has said that's mentally uh, the ones who have time they can join in but since victoria is recording everyone will still have access to this uh, even afterwards you don't have to feel any obligation to stay yeah okay um so we have 3 minutes on this one so maybe you can start by highlighting yeah. your points and then we'll continue in the next session yeah so like she uh, like victoria mentioned and what you saw in the presentation we all have different people that we initially get to learn from and it sticks because i'm sure even for you victoria like to finally land on the budget mom and actually really understand you probably went through a few people yes or a few videos a few articles and things like that mm -hmm. it was the same for me the day that i got sick and tired of bullshitting my life i like <laughs> i quite I, I read quite a number of maybe articles like short articles i watched a few videos on youtube but even though what they were saying would probably make sense and it's still good financial information it just didn't stick until i watched this 30 minute video of uh, dev ramsey so like well i wasn't trying to pay off debt per se even though I, I i was just actually coming from paying off debt so i just needed to learn how to manage my money and so yeah like the thing he says $1000 for your uh emergency fund and then you proceed to paying off debt then you do the 3 to 6 months i didn't do all those things because they didn't apply to me at that point but most of the things i do somehow uh in the core of it all ha have some relation to do with him yeah so then on the savings um excuse me save savings and investments we get a lot of questions on investing actually even right now there's a question that came from someone that was about investing even though okay yeah it's part of financial planning so um one thing i can say is before any of us started investing i think it's clear that we had to first save somehow like you see if you follow me on instagram you've seen that this year i struggled with how to save like i was saving but it wasn't just well structured but whatever the case even though i was investing the first thing i did in 2017 2018 was i really to save and save well and then yeah sinking fund ideas we have 40 41 seconds yeah. um my sinking funds i have posted them and you don't need to create a sinking fund for each and everything in your life but like victoria said when we are starting out you are super excited and you feel like if you leave something out you will not do it so you end up creating whether it's 50 i remember even me myself like starting out i, I would have an envelope for each week like spending you know but now it's been brought down to just like lump sums or lump sinking funds yeah that's all so I think the session will end and we will start it.